Evo, you had a very successful playing career, the New Saints, Wrexham, and of course internationally with Wales. At what point during that career did you consider that one day you would go into coaching? Um, in the later years, really, um, Rev. In the early years, I was always um, a player who'd, who'd ask questions. You know, why are we doing this? What, what are we doing this for? Um, and Andy Cale, it was to begin with, you know, one of the best coaches. I've been very lucky, you know, I've had very good coaches and he was one of the best, if not the best. Um, but he explained things in a, in a simple manner, which was good for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, when I first come back to the club, and obviously Cale was here in 2009, um, that was when I started to really, really think about time after football, if you, uh, so to speak. Um, when I have to hang them up, I was, what, 30 years of age, 31 years of age. So, obviously, I was coming to the end. Um, and it was Kalo. Obviously, I'd, I'd sit and I'd always, like I just said, I'd always ask questions in training. You know, why are we doing this? And in games when I weren't playing, I'd sit up the top with Kalo and he'd, he'd, he'd I'd, be, I'd just be watching the game. But he'd be saying things to me like, Right, when that ball's when the ball's down there, what what are the back four doing? What's everybody doing? Does everybody know the jobs? X, Y, Z, you know. And it started from there really, so um obviously I got onto me um, B license um, with the FAW. Fantastic. You know, I'd done the intensive, really enjoyed it. Um, Dave Adams, who's now head of the FAW, um, was my mentor at the time. Um, helped me loads, helped me loads. Um, and then it progressed from there. We went from there onto the A licence. And then I'm currently on the pro, um, but you you think you know everything as a player, you know, but until you actually step away and, and do the coaching side, there's so much more to it. There's so many more layers that you find out about yourself, you know, and then you get to know what, what players are thinking, you know, how they think. Um, and then you put sessions on. Um, it started with the scholarship here. And um, the players, I'd like to think, because of where I'd been with my playing career, because of my stature at the club, you know, they, they listen to you. They listen to you, um, you know, because you're trying to help them. And, and develop them as players, but also as people as well. That's massive for me. You know, and like I say, I've done that for a few years, me, myself and Scott, and then obviously progressed now where I am to the first team. And as your playing career came to an end at the New Saints, you also stepped seamlessly into a coaching role at the club. I guess there must be advantages of staying at the same club, but possibly disadvantages as well. Uh, yeah, there's there's both, but I'd, I'd say there's more more positives. You know, I've um, been on that coaching um, journey now, like I've said, which TNS have given me the opportunity. You know, if if I'm not at TNS, then where do I start? How do I get into it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the likes of myself, you know, you've got Scott, um, Sad, Simon Spender, you know. And, and a lot of others who've been at the club a long time now and who are taking that um, journey as well. Um, it's, it's a, if you like, a conveyor belt, you know. The chairman likes to keep the team in-house, so to speak, you know, which has brought multiple success, you know, so it's something that works. And like I say, for myself, it's been a fantastic journey. You know, there's been ups, there's been downs, you know, but the opportunities that um, from staying at TNS has been fantastic for myself. You mentioned a number of names there, in particular, Scott Rusko, Chris Sargent. You used to play with them. Now you're all coaching together at the first team level. Is there a fluidity that you've been able to bring together from your 
playing days into the coaching setup? Yeah, like I said, I, I've um, worked with Scott for got to be near enough twenty years now, so we know each other. We know each other well. Sides have worked with him for it's got to be 12, 12 years, something like that, fifteen years. So we all know each other pretty well. <laughs> so it's you know it's it's good. It's a good work environment. Um, we're not all yes men. We challenge each other daily, which which we need, you know, um, and it, and it works well. And it works well. Um, like I said, I started with Scott, obviously playing, but then with the scholarship, you know, um, we had a number of years working together in the scholarship when it was just myself and him, um, and now Sarge heads up that with Simon Spens and and a load of others, you know, and it's. It's it's good. It's good. You know, we we've got that environment where we challenge each other daily, like I just said, and and it works well. And you've already mentioned that you're doing the pro license at the moment. How's that going, especially when you consider all the COVID nineteen restrictions that are on football at the moment in general? Yeah, it's been difficult. Um, it's a superb course. It's opened my eyes massively. Um, we, uh, like I, I mentioned in an earlier interview, we went on an SAS um, week away. Um, now, if you think Port Albert on a Tuesday night away is difficult, you want to go try and camp it out in Usk <laughs> and then the Breckens. Um, but it was a massive eye-opener for me. It was all about leadership and how how you lead and, and you know, you think to yourself, oh, I know this, I know that, but... Like I say, it's a massive eye opener and I've took loads from it. And it's it's given me the stepping stone to um, push on again and re really push on and really delve into what I want, what um, you know, what how I see the game, you know, and I bring all that back to TNS then and then put that and some things we work with, some things we don't work with. You know, it's, like I say, it's that challenge and support, you know, and it's, it's only good for um, myself and CNS, you know. And like I say, I can't praise the pro enough. It's It's been difficult with COVID, you know, there's been a lot of Zoom um, meetings, you know, but like I say, everybody's had to adapt. And, you know, I know the academy, Sarge, um, we've had to do it with the first team when the restrictions have been in place, Zoom um, sessions, running sessions, the lads have had to do on their own, you know, so people have had to adapt in these um, difficult times. And, you know, everybody's working together and pulling together to get through these. As a player, you were always ambitious, you always gave your very best, you wanted to be the best that you could. Now as a coach, what are your dreams, plans and aspirations on that level? Yeah, like I say, in, um, short term, it's uh, um, obviously keep developing um, with the pro, finish the pro this year, and obviously help TNS regain the title. That's that's what we're about, you know. It was difficult, the circumstances last year, um, to lose our grip on that, um, it hurt a lot. And I know it hurt the group a lot as well, uh, and the club as a whole, you know, and that's... That's the main aim, um, to really go and get our hands back on that title. You know, um, and we're in a very good place at the moment. You know, we started the season well. We've um, we've been good. There's been a there's been a, a steeliness about um, the players, not just on match days. It's day in day out. You know, wanting to be better. Um, that comes with, like I just said, with the, the coaching staff as well challenging each other it's not just the coaching staff the staff challenging each other we challenge the players the challengers and everybody's got that, like i say got that steeliness to be better you know to want to be better and they do that day in day out with training you know so that's good that's good and that's that's like the first and foremost um and then it's just to develop um rev you know continue like you just said day in day out be the best version of me i can be you know um, to help myself, to help, most importantly, the players and the team, you know, and then who knows where it takes us. 
obviously there's no football at the moment in Wales. What's that like as a coach in terms of your preparation and application, knowing that there's no game at the end of the week to prepare for? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, difficult as a player and as a coach because you're trying to keep the lads upbeat when they haven't got an end goal. It's it's very difficult. Um, but then that's down to us coaches to create the environment, uh, you know, a, a, a happy but a driven environment where it's competitive and the players like to enjoy coming in and being in that competitive competitive environment. Um, and we've done that this year. We've brought in two or three players, especially with um, Leo, Ryan and Louis, you know, They've added a lot of quality to the squad, you know, and the competition from places is high. Nobody's guaranteed a place, you know, and that that brings that competitive edge as well, you know. But the players, credit to them, they they push each other, you know. Their standards are high, and we've just got as coaches got to keep that, you know, and keep that going, you know, create the sessions that are enjoyable, but also that drive the players to want to be better to want to better themselves you know and also like i said drive us drive each other to be better